Okay, so this is my Z80 Playground, my single board computer, and I've got a program up and running on it. So if I press reset, there we go. We're in Tiny Basic, Tiny Basic version 2.0 for the Z80, which I've assembled and put into this EEPROM here. And it's currently running um, from that EEPROM with the 64K of RAM that's on the single board computer. So let's take a look at Tiny Basic and see what it can do. Well, the answer to that is it can do some things, but not much. So for example, let's have a look. Is there a program in there? List, no, there's not. So let's make one. So 10 uh, print, please subscribe. to 10 that's a pretty good basic programming isn't it so basic is a language from sort of the late 70s early 80s and it was very popular in fact a lot of home computers it was the only language you could use uh, let's list that uh, list there we go run oh lovely uh, that's going to go around forever and I think control C yep control C gets me out of that now tiny basic has a special place in computer history because of a very famous comment that's at the start of the source code. Let's just have a quick look at that. So here we are in VS Code looking at the source code for Tiny Basic. And as you can see, it was originally written for the Intel 8080 uh, by uh, Li Chen Wang or possibly Wang Li Chen. And it was translated then into Intel Mnemonics, I think still 8080 Intel Mnemonics by Roger Rouse Kolb in October 1976. And the famous message in here, copy left, all wrongs reserved, was a bit of um, a dig at Microsoft at the time, who'd produced a BASIC, which was very popular, called Microsoft BASIC, um, which they were selling for quite a bit of money and which upset the sort of early home computer market who didn't think you should be selling BASIC for a lot of money. I found this source code on the internet. Um, I converted it to Z80 mnemonics using a program that converts 8080 to Z80 assembly language and I've assembled it and um, it's, it is tiny. You've got to say one thing about Tiny Basic, it's very tiny. I've, I've made some additions to it, I've improved it a bit and it still assembles into less than 2K, so it is definitely tiny. Um, let's just go back to Tiny Basic and I'll show you some of the changes that I've had to make to it. The first thing that I found really annoying about Tiny Basic was that everything had to be in capitals. So you had to put print in uppercase to get it to do anything. Um, but I've now made it case insensitive. So it will quite happily take uppercase or lowercase print. And the same with variables. Let A equal 1, print A. Um, you had to use uppercase A for the variable name. So it was, it was just too annoying to use. I kept forgetting to type in capitals and it stopped working. So I made it case insensitive. Um, I had to fix something with the delete key because that wasn't working. Um, I'm not sure what this thing is with when you rub out an entire line, but it's got a few strange quirks, but it seems to be vaguely kind of working. Um, so if we do a program like 10 for A equals one to 10, 20 print a 30 next a run ah, it, you got prints the numbers from 1 to 10 there's no edit feature which is extremely annoying so if you want to change line 20 you have to type it again 20 print a times 2 yeah there we go yeah, so one of the limiting features then in Tiny Basic is that there are only 26 variables and they all have to have single letter names. So if we do let a one equal one, it can't cope with it. And there's another feature. You, you've only got about four different error messages and they're all things like what and a and how. <laughs> it just It doesn't really help you when you get things wrong but it still has the ability to do various different pieces, different bits and pieces. And what I particularly like is it's quite easy to extend. So I have added uh, the word peak to peak from a memory location. And uh, so you can actually peak a byte from the memory location. I haven't written poke yet, but I'm working on it. But there's a major problem with this, which is that it can only cope with signed integer numbers. So let's have a look, print one, add two. It knows the answer to that. So print 10,000, add uh, 30,000, 
it can't cope with that because the highest positive number it can cope with is 32,768, I think, or seven. So it's um, a little bit limited, which means that when I want to peak, if I want to print peak uh, the top of memory, 65535, it can't do it because that value is too big to store in tiny basics, poor little brain. So it's a very limited basic programming language, but I think I want to um, use it just to try out a few bits and pieces because I want to add a mass storage device onto my Z80 playground, which is going to be a USB memory stick, like a thumb drive, a pen drive. And I want to try out using it. And it uses uh, various different um, input and output commands in order to write to it. And so I want to put into Tiny Basic, I want to put in and out. So you can do something like out um, 100, comma five to to send the value of five out to output port 100 which obviously you can't do at the moment because i haven't implemented that command and some kind of i don't know print in to get values in um, and then i'll be able to play around interactively with the mass storage device that i add and i'll be able to uh, sort of interactively uh, write a program to uh, use it well at least that's what i'm hoping is going to happen so I'm going to keep adding to this language a little bit and um, I'll see if I can make Tiny Basic not quite so tiny.